China's new top envoy in Hong Kong hopes the city will soon be back on track after more than six months of unrest. Luo Huining has completed his first day in office. He replaces Wang Zhimin, who only served slightly over two years. That's the shortest term of any director of the liaison office in Hong Kong. Roland Lim has more. Luo Huining's appointment is the first time someone without direct experience of Hong Kong has been appointed to the top party post in the territory. But he's had plenty of hands-on experience as the former top officials in Shanxi and Qinghai provinces. Speaking to reporters, Luo said that even though he had worked on the mainland for many years, Hong Kong is no stranger to him. Luo also praised Hong Kong's contribution to China and said that the city played a significant role in the country's development. Now, the liaison office is the vehicle in which Beijing can actually influence policy here in Hong Kong. The chief executive, Carrie Lam, for Hong Kong, says that she looks forward to working with the new liaison office chief and says that she hopes that they will work together to promote the positive development for Hong Kong, i.e. for closer integration of Hong Kong into the Chinese economy, as well as defending the one country, two systems policy under which Hong Kong operates. Some analysts say that Law's appointment is not necessarily a change of policy for Hong Kong, but more a tactical change to deal with the ongoing unrest. The Chinese leadership may be looking for a more direct control of Hong Kong policy with a new appointment and to make a clean break from the territory's bureaucracy, which has thus far failed to handle the protests effectively. Roland Lim, CNA, Hong Kong. And for more, we're joined by Professor Bruce Lui. He's a senior lecturer from Hong Kong Baptist University. And uh, uh, Prof Lui, what is the significance of this change and what do you make of the timing of all of this? Um, I think this uh, change is a, a compromise or even a backdown of uh, Beijing uh, policy in Hong Kong because for the replacement of the old uh, top official in Hong Kong, uh, he has been uh, shipped to work in a uh, uh, constitution that is research for the party's history. And uh, the post for him has changed to uh, the deputy head uh, the uh, director head to a deputy post that is half uh, level down. So this is a back down to punish the uh, former official. Um, and then for the time being, uh, I think it is quite a critical uh, moment now because uh, it is just uh, like nine months towards the next election, which uh, the pro Beijing camp has to face a big challenge. And then if uh, Beijing don't, doesn't make any compromise uh, up to now, this is very hard for them to maintain uh, a uh, good control in Hong Kong. Well, let's get your thoughts on Mr. Luo now. He's been credited for executing the government's anti-corruption campaign during his uh, stint in Shanxi. Uh, what do you think about his ability to end chaos and restore stability to, in Hong Kong? Um, I think for Mr. Luo, uh, he is famous of uh, handling some difficult and political crisis in Shanxi, especially facing a huge corruption uh, in the uh, government official. Uh, after that, uh, he, he proved his ability to President uh, Xi Jinping. And uh, now, uh, what Hong Kong needs is a uh, political partnership, which has kind of uh, experience and very senior in the party to handle the situation, which uh, law has uh, two terms of central committee's uh, membership uh, for himself. So this is the highest ever ranking uh, for the official in Hong Kong. And also he has concrete uh, provincial leadership experience. And this is uh, also rare for the past Hong Kong leadership. But I think uh, he's also still facing a, a hard job now because since he has this kind of experience, but he is lack of a uh, kind of Hong Kong exposure and also foreign affairs and um, some 
uh, economic uh, exposure as well. So uh, in the midst of uh, the challenges of Hong Kong and also China and American uh, relationship, I think uh, this is really a tough job uh, for Mr. Lu to handle. Right. Well, no, uh, apart from the fact that Law lacks experience uh, being in Hong Kong as well, uh, he inherits quite a complex and delicate situation. What will his biggest challenges be going forward? I think uh, his bigger challenges include uh, he has to implement the policy uh, by President Xi Jinping uh, late in the uh, fourth uh, plenary uh, meeting of 19th uh, People's Congress, in which uh, uh, Xi Jinping planned to uh, revamp the law in Hong Kong to set up kind of a national security protection mechanism and also to uh, uh, have some uh, uh, thing to do, reform the uh, civil service and also uh, to make some change in uh, the Hong Kong education system to make the Hong Kong students more patriotic. And these are all the tough jobs uh, if uh, he really has to do so, but without other policy to make compromise, such as to sack, uh, fire certain official in Hong Kong, and also have the independent inquiry to look into the alleged police misconduct, then it is uh, really a tough job because uh, he has to do it uh, in both hands, maybe one hand hard, hard and the other hand soft. If he has some kind of uh, soft policy, this may help him to proceed. Yeah, it, does, it does certainly have challenges ahead, and we are almost seven months into the protests now. As you mentioned, uh, students just a, a short while ago, Hong Kong says it will take a firm stance on teachers misleading students and politicizing them. Do you see that as having uh, some impact? Yeah, I think this is one of the major tasks uh, he, he we're going to do, and also Hong Kong uh, teachers and education sector are facing. Because uh, uh, the authority not only look into teachers, but also for the headmaster who protect the teachers and the students. If you are not in line with the party, uh, you may also be disqualified. And this is, I think, quite uh, uh, a hardship for Hong Kong. And uh, because uh, the university and also the school is a place of uh, independent thinking, and you have sort of academic uh, freedom, but not uh, everything to be in line with the uh, government and the party, especially when some, sometimes the party is doing wrong and the teachers and the headmaster and also the academics in the tertiary uh, should make their uh, independent thinking, where they criticize, where they praise, this is up to their independent um, conclusion, not controlled by the party. So uh, uh, the teachers or, or the student should not be penalized because of their opinion. All right, Mary, thanks for your thoughts this evening. Uh, Professor Bruce Louis from Hong Kong Baptist University.